Look in your notes, the if converted method. The calculation of diluted EPS assumes anyone who could convert does so. For a company with a convertible preferred or convertible bronze, starts with com computation just discussed, which is called basic. For convertible securities, the following adjustments are made. In the numerator, earnings are increased by dividends or after-tax interest that would not have been due if securities had been converted. So dividends or after-tax interest. The denominator, shares are increased by the additional number of common shares that would have been outstanding if they had been converted. The convertible preferred, assume had been converted at the beginning of the period or at time of issuance, whichever is later, no weighted is required. So that's an important point, that we're going to include it as of either at the beginning of the year, because you assume they could have converted all year, or if they were issued in the middle of the year, then just take half of it, because that's the earliest time that they could have converted. So again, that's an important point as far as when they are converting. So we look at when they converted, the beginning of the year, or time of issuance, if later. And the calculation results in an EPS number which is higher than the security is anti-dilutive and not included in the reported EPS. To determine whether or not an item is anti-dilutive, each item is considered separately in sequence from most to least dilutive. One would normally consider options and warrants first. So we kind of go in order. Is this dilutive? No. Is this dilutive? Yes. Is this dilutive? And so on and so on. So you'll see here net income. And now I'm making the adjustment for number two, preferred dividends not net of tax or interest expense saved net of tax. So those numbers are included there. And then the denominator, the bottom, that would be the number of shares convertible securities converted into for both preferred and convertible, not weighted. So we're not weighting them. Don't, you know, average them out. That would be for the whole year. All right, let's say, for example, I have bonds. And let's say I've got a uh, bond face value is 10 million bucks. 10 million bucks. Let's say the interest rate is 6%. That's $600,000. So $600,000 is the interest that I would be paying. And let's say these bonds are convertible into 300,000 shares of common stock. So they're convertible into 300,000 shares of common stock. Now, I've got this $600,000 of interest. So if you convert, what happens? If you convert, I save $600,000. If you convert, what happens is I owe you 300,000 shares of stock. So that's what's going to happen. So if you convert, I have to give you $600,000 of interest saved, and it's convertible into 300,000 shares of common stock. So that's what's happening if you convert. So in looking at that, those are the options. Now, if I have $600,000 of extra money, what's going to happen? I got to pay the government taxes. So let's say your tax rate is 40%, 1 minus 0.4, that's 6 times 6 is 360. So I would have 360 extra money net of tax to add in the numerator, but I would have to give out 300,000 shares of common stock. So if we just look at this, what's 360 over 300 is like $1.20. So it's kind of like $1.20 per share extra that I have to give away. If basic earnings per share is a dollar, would you give up $1.20 for a dollar? No, that's anti-dilutive. But if earnings per share was $4, if you convert it, everybody gets a little less. Hmm, okay. So you can see here the difference between the two. So in the numerator over here, I would add back plus 360 in the denominator plus 300. That would go in the numerator versus the denominator. So if, for example, we had earnings per share, and let's say before this calculation I had 400, well, let's come back over here. Let's say this was $400,000 and this was 100,000 shares. That would give me 400 over 100 is $4 a share. So that's basic. Now, if you convert, what would happen? If you convert, what would happen is I would have the 400 plus I'd have an extra $360,000, but I had 100, I gave out another 100 shares. That gives me 760 over 200, which let's just say is what, something under $3.80 a share, let's say. I'm just pulling that number out of my whatever. But it's less than four, that's dilutive. Because it was 400 at 100 is $4. It went from four down, that's dilutive. Everyone see that? That's how you look at it to see, is it dilutive? So even if they, and this is important, even if they never convert, it doesn't matter. Could they? 
Yes. Is it economically advantageous? Yes. Then do we include it? Yes, we do. So again, in looking at that, that's the calculation, that's what we're adding. So in the numerator, you add the preferred dividends, not net of tax, bond interest, net of tax. In the bottom, the number of shares that they converted into. That's what we're adding in this calculation. That's what we're adding in these numbers in order to see.